Thank you all for tuning in today to the show. Uh, I remain your friend, Ego Kelly Kakite. Um, I have a special guest today on the I Go With Ego show. He's um, a friend. He's a brother. He's Shedu Onabu. He's um, arguably, I'll tell you, one of the best um, voiceover artists I've seen in the world. You know, he's one of the best um, radio presenters I know personally. Okay, so he'll be on the show. But before he before I bring him in, I want to say um, a quick um, one. Thank you again for hanging out with me all all the time on the show. Uh, the I go with ego show basically is to enlighten everybody, enlighten people on um, the stories of international students. You know, because most people want to come study abroad. You know, but they have to understand what it entails. You know, the struggles we do face, the opportunities we have. You know, uh, as international students here, not just in America, but around the whole world. Okay, so yeah, it's to throw more light on the experiences on, on their journey. Because I, I feel that as humans, we, we have to own our journey to be an inspiration to everybody. So uh, for the show, we'll be having, um, every month we're having two guests on the show to share their stories of, as international students. And also we have a special appearance from anyone it could be anyone in the industry it could be anyone anywhere in the world so at, at, for today our special appearance is my friend my brother shedu onabu i call him bosley uh, he would um, be talking to us about the power of your voice you know as humans we have a vo everyone has a voice okay so it could be either you're speaking about something or you're standing up for something we all have a voice and there's no better way to use our voice in such a time as this, you know, to be able to stand up for what we believe in, you know. So uh, I'll bring Shadu in now. Uh, I'll introduce him real quick. Let me let me add him to the life, real quick. And thank you guys for coming in again. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. Yeah. So as Shadu comes, please do want to throw in your questions to him. I know he's ready to answer all the tough questions and to tell us a little bit about what he believes in as uh, is the power of your voice. Hi, Shadu. How are you? Hello, Eko. Good to good, see you. Uh, good evening from good good evening from Nigeria. Right. <laughs> good um, midday or good afternoon from from the US. It's good to see you. Yes. Good to see you too, bro. Good How to have see you. Been? you. Oh, thank God. It's been. I have no words really, but I can just I can just say it's been an awesome ride. Okay. Um, all the way from how when was the last time we even saw it's been a really long time it's, it's but um i mean it's been years. yeah it's been quite a while but between the last time we even, we even spoke and now it's been it's been beautiful i know there's the um covid19 pandemic going on but then again i always look at it from an angle of really it's a wonderful time to be alive imagine what you're telling your grandkids Right. The kind of stories you'd be telling. <laughs> in in, in, in twenty twenty, yeah. we had we had a sudden pause to the whole world and change of everyone. Oh plans, yeah, you know? yeah, it's, of course. It's, 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 it's amazing, really. So tell yeah, us, uh, where, well, you told us your name. Where are you from originally, and where are you speaking to us from? Okay, so um, I am uh, Chiedu Norbert Onabo. I'm a Nigerian, and um. I'm from a region known as the South South of Nigeria, Delta State to be precise. I am also a voice actor and broadcaster. Uh, I also double into digital art. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, all those things you love to do from when you were little. And it's one of those uh, wonderful uh, things in the world of um, media right now. Everything is really going digital and you don't want to be left behind. So yes, I dabble a lot into uh, digital art also. So I kind of try to be an all-rounder with the media, although I have my um, my core, what I really do, which is voice acting okay. and um, broadcasting. Nice. So yeah. Nice. Well, well that's, uh, that's who I am. Yeah, well, uh, you know, you know, if you remember back then in school, I tried my best to do the voiceover thingy thingy. I'm like, no, that's not for me. We have people that are gifted in voice, in voiceover, being a voiceover artist, and people that are, are just natural born. And I know you're one of them, and I'm sure. so, so proud of where you've come and how far you've, you've gone in, in the industry and all that. So, quick one. Yeah. The power of your voice. Tell us, what, what do you think about, um, we often hear about technology giving voice to the voiceless. 
okay? Uh, what does voice yes, mean yes. to you? Wow. Well, um, it's uh, as simple as the question sounds. It's, it's really deep. You know? um, so first off, uh, the voice is a, is a gift from God, right? It's a gift from God, but then it's also a tool, a very, very priceless tool for man for communication. Okay. True. That's we're talking about having a voice literally, like we're speaking right now. You know, so that's that's uh, that's what it is. But then you could talk about it being um, trying to be to be to 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 give people a voice. That's when you say you are giving someone a voice, or trying to help someone speak, or mm -hmm. help someone voice something out. Yeah, majorly expression. True. You understand? Uh, the voice is a very huge tool for expression. It goes both ways, both um, from as we speak and then helping people to express themselves. You, know, you could also term that as giving a voice. Uh, that's uh, what it actually is. And then it can be used in various ways, in different ways. Like I said, it's a tool. So, I mean, if you have a tool, what do you use it for? That's what's really important. So what it's used for is where you now have to see where the strength comes from how it makes its impact, how um, it, it influences others. You know, so yeah, that's, that's what uh, really what the voice is to be. First, a gift from God and a priceless, most, one of the most valuable tools of communication for man. Yeah. Well, you, you, like, we don't need to tell anyone we're in the very um, trying times with the COVID-19, yep. where, where every single yep. thing is being moved digitally. You know, I, I, I it was, it's painful when you know you have um, some trips to make to maybe go for a UN conference in DC or <laughs> South Africa, <laughs> and you know, and it's cancelled and has to go online. It's tough. It's tough emotionally. You know, so at at such points in time, people's voices could be down. So tell us, what voices do you think are, are being left out um, due to technological advancement? <sighs> Because I I I knowing, thought about knowing fully well, knowing fully well that not yeah. everyone has the the means to go digital. You get so yes, you you know, you know when 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 um thinking about such a question like this, I would I would like to respond to it in a in a way where it should be understood that there are evolving times, True. and due to this evolution in time, technology is one of the major proponents of this evolution. Like, I mean, you just spoke about the, the happening, happenings of um, COVID-19. This pandemic has practically skyrocketed a lot of tech-based companies. True. When it comes to like, what we're doing right now via Instagram, yeah. Oh my goodness, like the very first week of the lockdown in Lagos, right. every single person on my Instagram contact was live. <laughs> and I'm like, what? What's yeah. going on right now? Right. And then, you, I mean, um, for like, um, I think the past uh, one month or so, I've been in a couple of Zoom meetings, at least once every week, I was, I was on a Zoom meeting. So, you know, um, I'd like to um, respond to that question looking at it from what parts have um, gotten advancement in technology. Okay. Um, I'm speaking from, from, from Nigeria right now. I'd say um, we're not quite there yet when it comes to technology, in quotes. Yes, I'd say we're practically just consumers in, for the most part. For the most part, we are. So, but like you, like you rightly observed or like you rightly stated earlier on, there are some some definitely some people or some countries who are caught short when it comes to this nigeria is one i could give the top tons of examples as to how you know right now schools are one of those um uh, especially talking from the um, um perspective of uh, nigerian education the nigerian yeah. education system yeah um tertiary institutions primary schools Secondary schools, they are going through a tough time right now, trying to readjust to, you know, the new era.
per se. Uh, so it's or rather the, the pandemic per se. So it's um, it's been a tough one for the education system, really. And I think, um, except you know, talking about first world countries, first world countries since like what the eighties, they've been doing a whole lot online. It's always yeah. been, um, it's it's always been like the back of my hand. I mean, you want to do something, you register the courses, going to classes, you do it all the time online. But then sometimes I look at at things like this. Um, talking about the, the pandemic right now. Um, um, I look at things like this, you know, as opportunities, you know, this is the time to get that voice out, to be able yeah. to express yourself using technology. Yeah, so education is one of the things that people left out. Uh, worldwide, it, it, it takes a whole lot, generally, to put up how many people online and they're going to classes. When it was uh, without the pandemic, people could still do this physically, go to classrooms, mm -hmm. interact people, you know, and um, um, it's, it's a huge challenge. So generally speaking, one major, um, uh, ma major thing that has been set back when it comes to um, not having such a voice has been education, especially from the perspective of Nigeria. But then yeah. as the awareness increases, it's obvious that steps are being taken. I mean, in first world countries, what's just left is even for something new to have a voice. Everybody's waiting for the birth of something, you know, for it to have a voice. So, yeah, in response to that question, education is one very huge thing that needs a lot more True. in these uh, times. You know, even, even for, for the first world countries, that, for the first world countries for us, maybe U.S. here, yeah. it's too yeah. tough, yeah. Yeah. honestly. Yeah, yeah. Tough. I, I, yeah that's, that's why I... I yeah, not not everyone is comfortable to take an online class. Yeah, okay, because I'll yeah. tell you the truth: sure. online classes are very they're, they're they're cool, they're easy, but they're very dangerous. They are dangerous because you forget you okay. have homework, you forget you have due dates, you forget you have exams. Yeah, because who really cares? You no no one ever sees you. You're at home just. I mean, like I'm, I'm where I like do whatever I want to do. Yeah, true, true. You, you know, but so, so it's it's a huge word. They're not to talk about African countries or the developing countries of, of the of the world. So it's it's been a yeah. it's been a huge. I agree with you when talking about education, and I feel that the government and the leaders can do better. They should do better. A lot. It should be a wake yes. up call. It should be a wake course, up call. So 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 tell me. Like you said, so why is our voices very important in such a time as this? To be able to stand well, to lead us and all. Yes. Um, uh, so um, we are. I was. I was having a conversation with someone earlier on today, you know, and um, um, she was explaining to me how, you know, um, the, in the the media industry has just blown up. There's so much going on. Everybody can do any, literally anything they want to do right now. And I'm like, yeah, this is simply because of, um, of um, the times we're in. Oh, yeah. She was like, yes, you know, technology has really, I said, yes, that's where I was going. Technology has really enabled a lot of people. So, you know, what's really important, like, to take the case, and let me give a bit of a background story. I, I started my career when Yahoo Messenger just launched. I mean, yeah. Yahoo. <laughs> and I'm, <laughs> I'm sure you you don't understand what that oh, means. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's it's not so far back, but for for a lot of people, they don't understand what I mean by when I target Yahoo Messenger, <laughs> you know. And and when when that started, yeah, I I want to I want to um, put put this in perspective of musicians, the entertainment um, industry which is um, heavily uh, uh, infused in the media. I mean, it's, it's a huge contributor to the Nigerian media. Now, to make, the entertainment um, industry in Nigeria um, enjoyed a huge growth. Like, it was so successful that when things like Facebook started coming out, they were able to make use of it, you know? Yeah. But then a lot of these things started to spread and it took time. Right now, um, the Nigerian entertainment industry has voices, not just a voice, when oh, yeah. it comes to 
yeah, when it comes to, to Nollywood, everybody knows about Nollywood. Practically everybody knows about Nollywood. True. And then the Nigerian music industry. You know, um, I remember when, when they, they practically had to get to the studio to submit CDs, you know, for them to, you know. But then now you could always get on your phone, mm -hmm. send a message, send a link, you get to download the song, and you put it out there for people to listen. Sure. You know, so, you know, a whole lot of other things um, need voices out there right now. Let's, let's, just, let's just put it all in a nutshell. The government and the people. Identity is one of the major reasons why voices need to be out there. True. The government and the people need more synergy, need more communication. Yeah. Most times I feel like, um, um, okay, I'm speaking from the perspective of being a Nigerian again. I feel like there's this huge disconnect. In fact, not like I feel, there is a huge disconnect between the people and the government. So, you know, there are a lot of people who come out using what they know best, how, uh, whatever they're into, to give voices to, uh, from the people to the government in different ways. It could be via technology, it could be via uh, designing an app, it could be via having a Zoom uh, session, speaking about certain incidents. You know, so generally speaking, I feel like there should be much more synergy between people now. People need to start speaking up. You know, you were saying something about back then, you didn't think like, uh, you know, using your voice was sort of... I can tell you, it's just a matter of time. If you, if you put in much more effort, you would mm -hmm. practically get better at it. I don't think True. there's anything that, um, um, as human beings, we're not able to do. It's True. a matter of, do I want this? How much do I want this? How much time do I need to put into it? So, generally speaking, everyone needs a voice. Every single person. Whatever it is that matters to you. There's, there, there are a few great areas, but what I always advocate for is um, everyone needs a voice, yeah. and so long as it's for progress and for positivity, True. there's no problem. You can always advocate for whatever you want, put it out there, so long as it's for progress and positivity. If it always adds to and makes, you know, makes um, it better for everyone, no problem. You need to get your voice out there. There are people who, it's their calling to be able to voice out for other people. You know, so yes, I'd say um, uh, most likely um, the people, they need to get their voices out there a lot more in any yeah. which way they can, any which way. That's, that's what we use here in Nigeria, you know, any which way, whatever way is possible right. for you, put it out there, just do it. What's important is causing the awareness, you know, and letting people know that this is what is going on or this is how certain things are going on or what one would like to do. True, you know, yeah. For for us here, most times when you, when you talk about having a voice and using your voice, the constitution and the law protects you when it comes to freedom of speech yeah. and all that. So, Very true. what Very are the limitations true. against too? In let me use what African yeah. countries when it comes to freedom of speech and the government giving you the human rights to say your mind and, yeah. and without fear of being arrested or something. Yeah. That's that's true. When when it comes to that, um, it's it's a freedom of speech thing, you know. And um, you know, democracy has also evolved with time. Um, I I feel like like the US seems to even be at the at the cusp of democracy sometimes because it's like everything is just going this way, <laughs> you know. Even though you know, it, it's like every every everyone can do anything. Sure. But then there, there also there, there's some reservation I have about the, the American government when it comes to freedom of speech. Sure. You know, I, I this is the way I get anyway. Um, I mean, um, I'm, I'm I'm a pet lover. I like I love dogs to be precise. Okay. You know, I, there's something when you when you get to to when you own a dog. There is uh, this analogy I'm giving is for you to understand how I get to see democracy at its peak most times. You know, so when you when you own when you own a pet like a dog and it's 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 domestic, it's in your house, it most likely doesn't need a collar. 
So it, it, can, it can go anywhere it needs to go. Let it into the house. And, you know. But then when you get to go out, if you get to take your dog for a walk, for a walk. you need to get it a collar and a leash. Now, most times I, I feel like, you know, a lot of people think democracy is that um, uh, type of government where you are like a dog that just goes out without a leash and a collar. When that happens, you get to lose your identity. You become a stray True. because you get to do almost anything. There's no control. True. You understand? So um, I, I feel um, it's a matter of understanding what it is and having there, there should always be lines that shouldn't be crossed. You know, True. anarchy is very, very um, close to, to the, the, the highest form of democracy. Let me put it that way. You know, sure. when, when everything seems like everybody can do anything, that seems sure. like they cannot be controlled. So, yeah, that's, that's that on uh, when it comes to, um, you know, looking at democracy and, um, and people being free to express themselves. Yes, yeah. I believe in freedom of expression, you know, but then you should, oh, there's also wisdom in applying that, um, that expression of freedom. Of course, I, like I remember the word that they're saying then that there's freedom of speech, but not every word you say is should be free because of course you have to be oh, careful, yeah. and there have, to be, there have to be limitations to how you can use your voice and the things you can say out in the public, mm -hmm. not to cause violence, not to incite violence, and, and all that. True. You know, because true. because true. Very even, true. I, I remember then when um, back home in Nigeria, when I think was it Two Face that wanted to lead a protest about the government oh uh, and he, uh, oh and he, and he had um, a, a letter of a night or something that he stopped so that that's that's where that's where i get bothered as an african okay you know that we cannot in 2020 we can't still express ourselves and the things we want to say with our voices being the loudest now if you go on my twitter page you know i call the government out every day oh yes oh yes i understand totally in terms of the things they should yeah. do but I, I i know so well that even if i go back to nigeria if Buhari is still the president, they might arrest me from the airport. You, you get. Once they, they identify who, who, who has that tweet. They can arrest me from the airport. So, so, so these are the things that we see and we say, you know what? We have to stand up for ourselves. Just let your voices yeah. be heard. No matter, most times, no matter the consequences, that has to be there. You know, uh, whenever yeah. I have the opportunity to travel um, around the US to speak at events, I, t I tell them this. I said, if you want to ignite change, then you've got to use your voice. You can't just say, oh, I, yes. I want things to be better, and I sit in the house and say nothing. Nothing will be better. The same thing, too, I tell uh, my African friends, I say, and if you want to see a better government, that it comes in four years, he goes or she goes, comes in eight years, they go, the, the, the country is not your father's right. Democracy should be there. People should be able to vote for who they want. Four years, eight years, and you're out. You know, and so when, when we see these things happening in African countries and we come over here and see what goes on here, it becomes a burden for us, you know, that we have to Very speak at, at all times, you know. So, yeah, tell us, tell us, in terms of voices, who's your biggest influence? Wow. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's that, that's huge. I think there's a, there's a who and there is a, there is a, there is a what. Let me put okay. it on. There are things that have been my biggest influences, or rather influence. I, I, I'd say it's, it's, a, it's a couple of people. I don't think it's just one person, but I remember the first person. I um, the very first person, though, was, was, was uh, James Earl Jones. Okay. If, you, if, you, if you've seen Coming to America, oh, the yeah. King Jaffe Jones. Yeah. You know, the guy who was uh, gay. Yeah, that, that guy. He was, he was, he was. first time uh, voice that it withdrew everyone's attention if you weren't watching the movie at that time you would need to see who was speaking so, so yes i think I it, was, it was one of the earliest, the earliest influences for me and then um about but back home here in nigeria i remember uh, dan foster is uh, also what well, he's american anyway but that guy has practically nigerianized with 
you know, so right. <laughs> Dan Fortner is another one. And then very recently, Chilu Lemba. Uh, he's um, based in South Africa, one of the most popular voices you get here on DSTV. You know, that, that okay. guy that does most of the DSTV ads. You know, so when it comes to um, the voicing, you know, as um, a voiceover artist, those. Then there, I have females too. Um, okay. A voice director, uh, Andrea Romano, is one person. Okay. And uh, Tara Strong. Those two Tara Strong. are very, very huge influences in the kind of work I do. You know, so, you know, um, uh, they are, they are my, one of my biggest influences, really. Like, um, uh, if, if if there's anything that uh, really started my career, I started doing a whole lot of a lot of research on these people, you know, and saw how they made impacts. Okay, then the Watts, I'd say right from an early age, cartoons made a huge influence on me. Watching uh, cartoons, and then, uh, trying to understand how were they making these sounds. Like how what was going on? How were they able to do this? You know, then documentaries, TV commercials, uh, video games, and then finally radio. Radio was the epic nice. because it was the, the highest point. You know, having that little thing that voices always came out of. And we were always like, how did these guys do this thing? And yeah, that that that, that was uh, those were the things that. Uh, we had the biggest input uh, for me. And I think you wanted to ask me initially about uh, um, the topic itself, yes? The power of voice. Oh, yes. Voice. So, yeah, I, I was going to that next, about the topic itself. Yes. Going there, yeah. Yeah, because I, I remember when you, you, sent, you, you, you sent me in the schedule and all, I was like, okay, this topic yeah. is going to be almost like a class. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, oh, yeah. you know, it's, yeah, it's um, first of all, I'd like to say like um, uh, the 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 very first definition I gave for what the voice is. Okay. Uh, the gift of God to man, or gift from God to man, and then um, one of the most priceless communication tools for man and his society. But generally. Let's just go basic and define what the voice is. You know, um, it's actually a sound produced from a person's larynx, which is a joke. It's just a sound. You know, basically, that's what the noun, the definition of uh, voice is. But then, as a verb, you know, it um, has to do with expression, mainly to express. Now, the truth is, as human beings, everyone has that right and power to express. You know, um, I mean, the, the, I, was, I was listening to um, a TED talk a few, a few days ago, and I got to understand that, you know, when it comes to um, having the power of the voice, I got to understand that, you know, it doesn't even always have to be vocal. That's Oral. True. Journalists who before time started media broadcasting have always written. Authors, they need to express themselves in True. different ways. We have Shakespeare, it's one of literature's biggest um, influences, you know. And I mean, he was able to impact on so many lives that speaking of William Shakespeare, his writings have been epic, fantastic, you know, when it comes to poetry or prose, literature in general, you know, so yeah. I, I, I would say, I would say the, the voice is a very, very priceless gift given to man, and it's one of those, um, one of those things that um, has even been underused. People haven't yet tapped their voice. I'm speaking of, you know, being literal now, being able to yeah. speak up. In a place like Nigeria, we, there's, there's a whole lot going on. Um, going back to the entertainment industry again, you know, um, you just gave an example about Two-Face a few years ago coming out, you know, to speak against um, 
a whole lot of things, a lot of things going on in the country, coming out to make a protest, you know. And we saw that his voice was stifled. After a few hours came up and turned down, you know, there, there, there are forces really that go against the voice. True. You know? But then I would like to implore uh, everyone, you know, don't let anything put your voice down. True. Once you are sure it's, it's, it's positive, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, um, you know, that you know would, would bring positivity and would uh, bring progress. Yeah. Don't let anything. If you can do it alone, find people who can do it with you. You know. So when it comes to when it comes to um, um, you know projecting yourself out there, you could always do that in any way possible. But then when it comes to the actual the act itself, being a voiceover artist or in broadcast, it's practically um, it's steady. There's no get rich quick. Um, or or get there immediately kind of scheme. You know, it's not always like this. You know, it's um, it's one of the things that I, I started doing at, at pretty early age, you know, and then I started doing professionally a few a while back and understood that there is a way, a pattern. You can always first off get to find yourself and understand what you stand for and then when you understand yourself and understand the voice you have, you can okay. find a niche and express it that way. Okay. So that's that's um, one of the one of the the many uh, ways in understanding the power that your voice has in expression. Expressing yourself is one of the huge powers that your your voice has. True. So um, I just wanted to outline a few things for anyone who is who's um, um, who wants to be the voice actor, voice artist. Yeah. It's 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 it takes time. Um, it, it it has to do with a lot of research. Uh, simple things such as, in fact, I I discover that in all my years in quotes of doing this kind of job, um, I, I I I I got to understand that it was. It was a process of learning. True. No matter what level you think you are, you mm -hmm. have to keep learning. True. I you have to keep learning. Earlier on this year, I, was, uh, I, I attended a class before the pandemic struck uh, Nigeria. And I, I got to learn something very valuable, as simple as breathing. In fact, I would say breathing is one of the um, major basics for voicing when it comes to voiceovers and broadcasting or projecting your voice. You know, breathing is something. And, you know, I think all the while we've always been taught to heave. When you breathe, you, you know, expand your chest <laughs> and you try to, you know, but, but then I got to learn in this class that we've actually been doing it wrong. You, you, you don't breathe from your chest up. You know, I don't know if you've seen if you've seen um, a newborn baby. You get to see that either when they're crying or when they're just breathing normally. It's yeah. their their bellies that keep going up and down. Yeah. You see their stomachs keep going up, going down. So, truthfully, uh, when it comes to that diaphragmatic, or that's a diaphragmic diaphragmic breathing, is where the heart is. Learning to breathe through your diaphragm. And you know your diaphragm is practically, you know, it's um, it's the primary muscle used in respiration. Yeah, it's directly below your lungs, you know, under your rib cage, kind of just close to your stomach. So when you get to inhale and exhale, you inhale with your nose. When you get to do that, you practically have to expand your stomach. That's the proper way to breathe. And you know, and doing exercises like that, it helps the strength of the air you project from your lungs. So it's it's practically something that um, I got to understand that you get to do things like this over a long period of time, and you get to expand your your knowledge when it comes to um, 
understanding and caring for your voice, depending on the job or whatever you're doing. You know, people who are public speakers do exercises like that. You know, people who are into radio uh, broadcast, newscasting, TV presenting. You know, it's um, it's an exercise that's that's really important. Diaphragmic sure. breathing, where you get to breathe naturally like a child. You know, so that's 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 one huge takeaway I had from that class, and I was like, my goodness, learning never stops. No matter right. what you're doing, learning yeah. never stops. So yeah, so um, in um, in that respect, you know, um, the power of your voice is something that um, um, I believe is, is bestowed on everyone. What's important is understanding your um, understanding first of all you have that power, and then how you want to use it. Okay. So that's that that's basically. Yeah, I have okay. a question for you from somebody. Is, is it possible to use your voice to change someone's opinion about something without faking your voice? Just ask it. <laughs> nice question. Uh, <laughs> um, well, that, that's a serious question anyway. But then I think it has to do with... Um, it's more psychological. This is much more psychological than... Um, um, direct, like literal. You know, there, there are some people who get to pretend in a different accent and True. it could change someone's response. True. I mean, it happens a lot here in Nigeria. If I wanted to pretend like I was from the northern part of Nigeria and I was going to the market, for example, and I was going to purchase something from um, whoever was selling, and the yeah. person who was from a northern is from a northern part of the country. Yeah. And I just switched to that accent and, you know, greeted him in a few northern, uh, you know, uh, languages. And then, you know, it could kind of uh, influence his or her yeah, response, you understand? <laughs> you know, like, you know, can you give me a bit of a discount on, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing? So it, it is, it is possible. It is possible. It is. Yeah. Uh, true, you know, uh, my friends are like, oh, you've been here for almost three years. Why do you still sound yeah. so Nigerian? I'm like, excuse me. I'm Nigerian. Why don't you what? Still sound why, Nigerian? Why, 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 why won't I sound Nigerian? Like, where do I come from? That's my origin, you know? But keep it, oh yeah. Okay. So, so, so no, no matter where you go to, no matter where you've been or where you travel to, of course, you learn the culture very true which is important yeah but then don't still forget where you come from that you have a voice from where you've where you've grown up in and you have to let the world yeah. know the voice you have and so that's why i tell them i can all, i can do what to refine my english cool but i cannot refine my accent because that's the way i grew up in and I, and I love it and i'm so proud of it it's my voice my identity you know and that's just where i feel it should be in life wherever we are I totally True. agree. I totally agree with that. You know, it's um, it's one of those things. Um, like I said, the voice is one of those things that has been uh, so underused. Even though in Nigeria, a lot of people could disagree with me. Like, I mean, we have artists, we have musicians. They use their voices. The question most times is, what are you using that voice? What's the do? impact? What's the impact? You know, so um, it's it's practically because some people. I I had a friend in the class. Uh, I, I call her a classmate. She wasn't so confident with using her voice. But then, you know, she was able to interact with people and understood that um, it's, it's a thing of the mind, first off, understanding the strength you have in your voice, being able to um, express yourself, you know. Even though she was there to, you know, to learn um, um, character interpretation and voiceover acting, but then she understood that, you know, being able to express yourself builds confidence. It gives you that identity for you to understand, you know, where you're from. I mean, you're just talking about right now. People, people would hear your accent and be like, this dude is not American. Where is he from? You know, <laughs> you know so it's, it's, uh, it's one of those things that um, um, Nigerians as, as a whole, I'd like to speak from my deep Nigerian perspective because, I mean, sometimes I think technology has its, its, its pros and cons. Um, looking at social media, for example, Social media has practically, um, to an extent, a large extent, you know, given people a voice. I agree. You know, they've been able to come out and in droves. I mean, look at Instagram for crying out loud. Look at look at Twitter. Okay. Look at what they are doing. Like, sure. I mean, I, 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 
you cannot go on Twitter and not see facts and opinions and expressions of self. It, it's always there, you know? And then Instagram has its own. I mean, it has its own form of expression, you know, True. which is, you know, giving a voice to those who are uh, into this kind of thing that we're doing right now. Ever photography, graphics and design, you know, putting your business out there. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's a very huge leap. But then again, there are the cons. Now, using Nigeria as an example, you know, there's always been um, a slogan, you know, called the, uh, you know, social media generation. You know, Twitter <laughs> generation. True. They, they just sit down and they just, you know, clickety clickety, keep typing stuff on their phones. There are certain issues that people actually have to come out and speak about. I mean, if you do, yeah, and you know, speak about certain things, have proper discussions, understand mm -hmm. your, your brother, have that communication um, gap closed. Because really, just having a Twitter discussion or a, an Instagram discussion um, doesn't always um, solve the problem. Sometimes sure. people have to see your expression and understand where you're coming from in person. You know, that's, what, uh, that's, that's what's really, really important when it comes to the power of your voice, understanding that that power is inherent in everyone and that you have the right to use that power positively and, you know, to always, you know, cause progress or, you know, um, bring progress to wherever it is you're lending, lending that voice uh, to. Yeah, I, I agree totally. You know, it's... Um... It's unique when people say we are the Twitter and Instagram generation. Uh, to some extent, even here in America, we could say that now because when it comes to elections in America here, the young people don't vote. They don't vote. But when it comes to con conducting <laughs> polls online, polls, they, they vote on polls online. So you think as a candidate, oh, I'm winning the election already. But on election day, Hell no, you will see them outside. Going it turns out, out, yes, it, it goes upside down. You'd be wondering what's going on. I, I learned so hard from uh, the 2016 election with Hillary Clinton. Hillary was basically winning on all the polls, Donald Trump winning, winning. But what happened on the election day? The young people, most black people, didn't come out to vote. It's the older generation that came out to vote. And of course, we have Trump there, you know. But so, so we just have to be the voice not just on social media alone, but in person when it comes to having our fundamental human rights in terms of going to vote, in terms of going out to speak in public about what we believe in, human rights and all that, it, it's very important that we don't forget that still, you know? So, well, tell true. us, Shade, um, I know you have a show, okay? A very special okay. show. Okay. <laughs> okay, so tell us about the okay. show so my audience so we can know and uh, what are your plans for your show? Well, um, okay, now the spotlight is really on me now, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, okay. it's all about you now. Uh, okay, so uh, first off, I'd like to say thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, it's, um, it's practically um, a, a concern uh, I have, or I have always had, but then I'm, I'm, I've, I've always tried to, um, I've grown through, uh, the media industry in Nigeria, and I've seen, you know, I mean, uh, the Bible says, when I was a child, I behaved as a child. You know, and there's growth. There's always growth, and the process is always um, staggering. It's something that you always have to learn from. If you grow without learning, there's a problem. There is a problem. So, but then, um, it's, a, it's a podcast, CTRL podcast, and it's, um, I coined the words out of, um, know, looking at um, the society, not just globally, but from where I am. I have a lot of passion. I, I didn't know I had this passion, frankly speaking, about, you know, <laughs> seeing Nigeria become greater than it is. Because, I mean, if you know, I mean, if you're any, any, anybody, um, like, when I say any middle-aged or any youth right now who understand the history of his country, talking about Nigeria, you know that um, we have potentials untold potentials. True. Like, I mean, even before now, 
there's practically no country you'd go to that Nigerians are not making strides, giant strides at that. Now, imagine if all these guys doing all these things out there were here in the right environment, doing the right things, talking with the right people, you know, having actually the society being structured the way it should be to harness these people. I mean, because I mean, mm -hmm. this is this is uh, this uh, uh, human human capital we're talking about here. So, well, um, the the podcast was born out of um, re-educating people, having meaningful, yeah. intelligent discussions. The CTR podcast, mm -hmm. uh, having yeah. our relationships with people, and okay. um, um, the core the core is actually self development, you know, and um, relationships. Basically, I I practically. Uh, rather than society, I practically looked at it that I mean, if everybody understood the kind of relationship um, he or she would have with anyone and everyone, it would make more sense. And one would be able to, you know, to put out there what you need to do, okay. and things would actually just work well. Obviously, there would be challenges, but then because of the kind of relationship and the way one would interact with those challenges, they would always be scaled. Sure. The challenges will be scaled, the hurdles will be scaled. So, yes, that's what the podcast is about self development and uh, society. Um, practically going to be focusing on relationships generally with people and um, Nigeria, in quote. So, uh, C, uh, CTRL is a uh, full meaning for communication, trust, respect, and love. It's um, uh, one of its, uh, I see it as um, one of the uh, strongest pillars. We've got, we've got love right there. There is practically nothing you cannot achieve when it comes to you know, you know, relating True. with uh, people. So yeah, uh, the podcast will be coming up uh, latest launching. It was supposed to launch it before the whole lockdown, but we know we had to move a, move a lot of things around. So yeah, uh, by last week of this month to be. Once every week, uh, okay. dropping every Saturday. Okay. And, uh, you know, something to just look forward to the weekend and then we will start the new week with, uh, uh, with the conversation or the lessons learned in the, in the podcast. So, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what it actually is about. Just, you know, lending my voice right there. Like we're talking about the power of the voice right now. So it's, it's one of those things I'm doing putting your voice yeah. out there, educating yeah. people, letting them know that this is how you could do things, this is how things c could be done. You know, it's, uh, it, it's not, um, there's nothing really that's set in stone. True. You know, things get to evolve, things get to change with time. There's always some basic thing, you know, there's always the basis or the basics of, of um, everything, but then things get to change and you have to learn how to adjust. I so yeah, um, it, uh, just, um, it's me putting my voice out there too. I'll be featuring uh, people who have um, been in um, uh, different careers um, and they'll be able to tell their stories. Coaches, to motivational speakers, to uh, people who have worked in the financial industry, the telecommunications industry, the media industry. You know, it's uh, something that's going to be encompassing anyway you know, so it's practically just you know putting your voice out there to re-educate people that's it true so i have a question for you uh, is um how yeah. can the voice be used to change the mindset of our leaders in the present era of nigeria wow <laughs> okay um how can it be used well i would say that um there are different ways. It's, it's, uh, when you know the peculiarity of, of Nigeria, I think, um, I think you would know how and what sort of voice to use. I like, I like using, using my own example because I work in the media. Um, I would use um, music as one very huge example. We had people like uh, in the 80s, like 70s and 80s, like uh, Felani Kulakokuti who is a huge influence on a lot of artists right yeah. now. You know, but then in the midst of all the um, entertainment and jazz and 
you know, drums and bass. He was still oppressed uh, by the government. People who had things to say, I were concerned about things going on in the community. There was always a message that was that was that was being passed in his music. So I, I would say um, it's not easy. But then um, make first of all, you know, making sure that you have the ears of the leaders is one thing, and then True. giving out the right message is another thing. In my opinion, what I think is, I mean, if all if if Nigerian musicians banded together to achieve something. Oh, yeah. It would make a huge impact. True. In fact, it would make untold, the, the kind of stride it would make when it comes to keep, giving people a voice. I mean, you could always get to um, get some data, or do some stats uh, when, when you say um, a government official is coming to speak for free. Admission is free. Come and listen to a government official saying something. And then come and listen to a musician a Nigerian musician, say somebody like uh, uh, Slatan or Naira Mali or Two Face, you know, coming out to admissions, you would know the difference. So, what, what, what I would, my response to that, uh, you know, um, to that uh, question is um, yes, you can, you can use your voice you know, to change the minds of leaders. That's why in um, the modern day, you have um, dialogues, you have True. discussions. So, and if you are in a country that um, is democratic, these things are very possible. You oh, know, yeah. in a place like Nigeria, Nigeria is, I tell you, is a mysterious country. <laughs> it's, a country it's a country that has a lot of mystery. You know, so there are certain things you would think that, that, would, that would work here but then you have to understand the workings of the government, of the people, you know, before you are able to give your voice, uh, your voice to them. And yes, it's it's very possible. It is. Yeah, you know, when, when you talk about about people, uh, about um, listening to the leaders, yeah, the leader, leaders listening to people is possible. Even here in, in the US, we have what we call town halls, town halls where where a representative or a senator come back home. And we have a big town hall meeting, and they ask him or her yeah. questions, and he or he or she has to answer, because the people have the power to recall you as a senator back back to oh office, yes, and they don't want you again. So when the democracy works, the people have the power. Now, yeah. over the years for Nigeria, we have just been accustomed to the to the fact that the government doesn't care about us, so we don't we don't we don't we don't care about the government too. The government can do what they like. The people will be independent on their own. And so it's like a, a norm, a dome covering the eyes of Nigerians to be able to explore that, hey, guys, I have the power to put that guy there, to put that woman there, and to remove them as well, too. So that's just the way things are there. That, that, painful. That's very true. You know, it's, um, you know, the, the, the problem, and frankly speaking, um, the problems or the challenges facing Nigeria yeah, it's not it's not rocket science. It's oh, not it's not, it's not so deep no. per se. What it what it is is it takes a lot of work oh, yeah. and dedication, you know, and um, selflessness. That's that's just what it takes. And these are the things that that's 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 lacking in the lead, in the leaders in quote. I don't like to call them leaders. I like oh, yeah. calling them rulers. True, because most times, you know, most times when you lead, you, you there, there's a positive impact. You actually people want to be like you, you True. know, and do things that you are doing, and you know, see how how far they can go when it comes to impacting the lives of people, or doing what it is that you have said you would do if elected or being put in that position. Mm -hmm. So, oh yes, it, it, um, it's a tall order when it comes to. Um, executing your ideals or the promises you have made and uh, being selfless about uh, your service to the people. It's, awesome. it's not anything... Yeah, I think someone has, a question. someone has a question for you. Uh, yeah. What are the negative impact of a test transmission in live broadcast? Negative impacts of a test, test. transmission 
in a live broadcast. Wow. Okay. Um, first of all, it's, it's that kind of question. I, I'm not so sure where to respond <laughs> to that from, but it sounds like an irony because you cannot, you can't, you can't be doing a live broadcast and testing <laughs> while doing a live. You should have, you should have um, test um, a test point transmission. Point. Yes, exactly. You should have a test transmission first before you go live, which I actually did before. You know, coming on, coming on with you right here. <laughs> there was already a test. Oh yes. Who, who sent that question? Who sent I that think. Question? It's, uh, let me see. I think it's. Um, I am Julie Bond. Julie I, Bond. I, I think yeah. I know who that is. <laughs> okay. Well. Well. Adesa is saying this. Adesa is saying this. Within the rest, with the response of COVID nineteen, it shows that. This these people, the people, we the people, we hear, we can listen, but they only they only respond to what they choose. True. Mm, 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 mm. I, I I I I concur with that. I concur, I concur with that. You know, um, the the it, well, it's it's evidence that they hear. True. That's one. Yeah, but then you know, it's it's already there's already a kind of a power, a power dynamic, a power structure. You know, and that's one of the things that that gives them you know, the power to, you know, respond to what they choose. Mm -hmm. But that's why we also have the power of the voice to speak out against these things. True. And earlier on today, someone called out um, um, a journalist on Twitter for giving, for endorsing uh, someone else who's supposed to be in government. And, you know, it was... The way, the way she called the person out on Twitter was very direct and... Straightforward. Uh, yes, and straightforward. The, you, you, you'd understand that there was a sense of urgency, and mm -hmm. this person was trying to explain that this is who you hold accountable when you have issues in government, people like this. You sure. know, and it was a media personality. You know, the media personality was actually, you know, um, endorsing someone and saying this is what uh, this person is going to be doing. So, 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 so she called out this person and was explaining that, you see, this is, these are the people you, you have to point to when you are yeah. having issues in the community because they endorse people. If you call out, it now looks like, you know what I mean? It seems like this person has sold her, you know, her right, right here by putting this person, you know, in front. So yeah, that's that's uh, that's what it uh, it really is. I concur with yeah. that. Days. Yeah. Well, well, the truth. What should I do? We want to thank you so much for enlightening us on. Wow, it's um, almost been, it's been an hour. Yeah. <laughs> already. It's almost time for us to wrap up, but we thank you so much. I we look forward to seeing you in the show again, and um, we we'll hope to yes, have uh, you back anytime. to talk more about this this topic for us. Any shout outs, real quick? Shout out to anybody. Shout outs, real quick. Well, oh man, no, we no go come out from this place. <laughs> uh, well, well, okay. Shout out going to Adesi herself. Uh, shout out to um, um, my younger brother, actually. I think Reggie, Reggie yeah. Kent, tuned in. Everyone who tuned in, shout out yeah. to you, Pax Four Thousand for real. Um, I am July born. Shout out to you. Shout out to everyone who actually had a discussion. Uh, with about this on WhatsApp, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, out to proudly Nigeria for life and uh, yeah. Easy Money Sniper Twelve. Shout out to awesome. Thank you, everybody. So uh, we're, we're going to drop the podcast tomorrow. Uh, so when we're done with the podcast tomorrow, I will let you all know so you can have you can listen to um, Bozzy and any question we don't answer today, we'll do it to answer in the podcast. Okay. Thank you, guys. Please stay safe and Bozzy. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon, man. Thank you very yeah. much. All yeah. right. Bye. Yeah. Bye.